What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about Redfall. I put in very close to four hours, and actually, I would have put four hours in just in last night, but the game actually crashed on me while I was playing it solo, so that's just one extra thing to kind of throw on top of this game, but played it roughly four hours. So this is not what you would consider a review, but it's going to be pretty close, right? Because I'm just going to be talking about what I feel of the game so far. So I've seen the reviews. I've seen the low scores. I tried not to watch too many people. I watched Mr. Matty plays his review of it, but beyond that, I really didn't want to get other people's, you know, influence into my brain to change how I feel about this game. But I, I will say, I think I'm going to agree largely with a lot of what other people said. I don't like this game very much. I think average is probably the, the peak uh, that we're talking about with this game. I think what upsets me the most is when you look at Arcane and their history. So, like, going from... And now, I never really connected with the Dishonored franchise. I know people absolutely adore it. I'm actually going to play it for my third channel in a, just a few days. I'm going to make a video on it for Back to the Past. So, I'm going to get into that, hopefully. But Prey... Okay, Prey I loved. I absolutely adored it. I played it all the way through. I don't know what about Prey made me play it, but not Dishonored. And to see where they've come from... And then to make Deathloop, which I did not agree with the 10 out of 10s. I did not. I think it was a good game, but I did not think it was this masterpiece game of the year kind of contender people were saying. That's my opinion. And then you have Redfall. How the mighty have fallen. I mean, at this point, honestly, I know they didn't make every single one of those games. Right? I think this is the Prey team that made Redfall, which is, I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened. So this is a game, obviously, you can play it solo. You can play it cooperatively. Now, most of my playtime was actually with a community member. So I want to thank a DJ Steph, actually, if he's watching. Appreciate it, buddy, uh, hopping on. We played it. I will say when this game is at its best, and I would say that's really only when you're in some sort of gigantic firefight, right? When there's different enemies, when there's vampires around, and you could do it through multiple means. You could be in like one of their nests. You can be in that uh, kind of like that reverse world where you have to, I don't know what they're called, where you have to go through and take out vampires, kill the heart, and then leave. When you're in the thick of things, it's not that bad, okay? It's rather actually a little enjoyable, and I can see people that say, well, I think I could have fun with this with my friends. I think in some instances you can. The issue, well, number one, watching Mr. Matty plays his review, a thing that scares me is he said this game was like 12 hours long. It took him 12 hours to do everything, and it's not live service. There's like dynamic events that'll happen, right? Like the vampires kind of like beaming down um, every so often. So there's that, but really, once you do all the side stuff, once you do all the main stuff, that's it. So yeah, you might have fun with friends, and maybe he rushed it, I don't I don't know, right? I don't think he did, but even if he did, okay, and the game's 15 to 20 hours, that's what you're getting. You're not getting a live service 50, 60, you know, I've seen people say, I'm going to put in hundreds of hours into this game with friends. I don't, I don't know, I don't think you will, you know what I mean? If you do, great, if you don't, I, I don't know if the game's going to actually provide that. So, and, and the reason I start there is that's really the only strength I would say about this game. I think it's fun at times to play with a friend. I played it solo, and so solo is, is not the way to do it. And this it's kind of what I was afraid of. We talked about this leading into Redfall. I, uh, I don't like people. I don't talk to people. I stay indoors a lot. I stay actually right here a lot. And uh, I like to play games by myself. Even games that are multiplayer, if they have a single player or solo component, I probably default to that. And this game is just not... You can do it. But I think it's harder because you're going to be doing all the things you would be doing, but it's just you. The AI is atrocious. So I did agree with this uh, concept with Deathloop. The AI in Deathloop I didn't think was good at all, especially when you compare it to Dishonored or Prey. I thought the AI in Deathloop was simply not good. The industry didn't really agree, and now we get Redfall, where the AI is laughable. Well, it's not even laughable. It's actually insulting. It's insulting how bad the AI is. I got multiple times where AI were walking backwards. One of I don't know if I captured it. Maybe I did. Maybe I can find it. One time we were in a building. I don't know if it was like a, a firehouse or something, but there was an AI that walked down the stairs backwards so they were facing up the stairs they walked backwards and I was at the bottom of the stairs and they didn't face me they moved in front of me to my right and went after the the guy I was playing with so they didn't even like look at me and it's mainly because their back was turned to me. So, and that's just one example. That happened multiple times. You'd have AI basically walking down the stairs backwards. But those could be glitches, right? You could probably fix that. But I think just the basic AI in this game is horrible. 
enemies. There, there's no there's no tactics to them whatsoever. Um, the way you shoot and kill them, like it's it all just feels very very lazy. Even the vampires, they are there's different kinds of vampires and they do different things, but they all kind of have the same pattern of attack, and it's just not fun. Like specifically, I guess playing it by yourself, it's just not fun killing the, these uh, these enemies, whether it's vampires or human beings. There's no personality. There's no real, like, weight to it. And I don't mean weight as in I need to, like, cry every time I kill a vampire. I mean, it just doesn't feel good, right? Now, I've seen, like, later on gameplay, right? I'm, like, level six or seven. I've upgraded some of the stuff. My C4, I, I, I like using C4. I like throwing C4 into a uh, group of vampires, you know, setting it off and then blowing up. And if they have low enough health, they'll, like, disintegrate. That's cool. And I've seen that with other characters, right? There's the guy who throws the the spike uh, that, like, emits electricity. That looks cool. And and I think that's where this game shines, is if you're playing it with multiple people, you get all those multiple play styles, right? So me and, and, and DJ Steph over there, we were doing it more uh, kind of stealth. We were sniping people. And then he had, uh, he was the guy with the raven. So he would send the raven. So we would see where everybody was. I, I don't even know what her name is. I was a girl that had, like, the robot. So the robot can distract. And then I also had C4. You know, when you mesh different play styles and different abilities of characters, it can be okay. But that's also at its peak. You have to walk to these places. You have to get to them. And to do so, you walk through a lifeless world. And so here we go in terms of the, well, I mentioned the AI. The AI is some of the worst AI things I've ever seen in my life, especially, well, in my life, maybe period, but also easily over the last like five, 10 years. Um, I guess we take AI for granted, even like average AI, you know, they don't have to have like these tactical units where they flank you and stuff, even just general AI that has a, a single clue of what it's doing would be 10 times better than this. So I, I really don't know what happened there, like whatsoever. But then I, I think the world's uh, lifelessness is another issue. Now, I knew going in, because I think we heard this through previews, that the world, in terms of, like, storytelling, it's mainly going to be through, like, finding things in the world. Well, that's all that it is, right? The cutscenes in this game are, like, the slideshow kind of stuff. And, look, I mean, like, we've talked about Sly Cooper before, and I, I like slideshows. I like presentations of what the plan is. I like it in Sly. There's so much personality there. In this game, there's there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing to these cutscenes. So, largely, you can skip them or you can just not care about them. So, all of the story is through finding journals and documents in the world. And there's some okay ones, but, and, and I, I, look, games do this sometimes. Not every game does this. I do think you need to have somewhat of a blend. I don't think the entirety of telling us a story in a game can be from finding, and, and I guess, you know, entirety. Technically, there are cutscenes, so it's not the entirety, but it feels like it. When you're going through this game, it feels like the only essence of the world the way you're getting the personality of the world is through having to read documents and 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 also i'm not really into that like i'll do it for the best games out there i'll do it for what i uh, would assume are going to be like really great stories or if i find a great story like the last of us the story of ish is largely told through context clues and finding things and finding documents right that proves to me that The Last of Us, okay, well, if I go and look around, like there's going to be some interesting stories that they're telling me through finding stuff. Redfall, it, it, it's something that jumps off the page, so like, why am I even going to do it? Okay, so, so you have that. And beyond that, the world is absolutely lifeless. So there are just chunks in this game where there's nothing. And you just walk through, go into a, a little town, and maybe there's a couple enemies, maybe there's not. Go to your objectives, both the main and side, do them, which will be maybe taking out 10 to 20 enemies. And then you collect something and you're done. And that's literally the entirety of this game. And uh, no, I, I just, I'm just not... Like, to get from point A to point B, to get to those firefights, you may have to walk. You know, there's fast travel points and stuff, and there's safe houses that are even more fast travel. But you have to walk through these just barren lands, and they're barren with AI. There's nothing there. But it's also barren with, again, like, charm, personality. The game doesn't look good. So 
I am not going to get, I've seen like the comparisons of like the trees. And then of course, you'll probably have like the fanboys comparing this and Halo. And then they'll pull in like Horizon. They'll do all this. Like, I'm not here to compare the the different games of different, you know, console warrior kind of stuff. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to tell you the game doesn't look good. Like the game looks really bad. Um, not necessarily like, I guess when you get close up to like the vampires, they look cool. They look fine. But like the textures, like just nothing has any kind of detail. Obviously the trees were a thing that was going around online but just even like the city street or like um there's uh there's numerous places here where like the water's been drained right so you see like boats kind of like just in the sand and you, you walk through that actually those are kind of like uh shortcuts you just go through there all the time in this game it's just so boring and it's so not detailed there's no detail in anything in this game so it's just it's not fun to walk around it's not fun to look around as you're walking and there's just not a lot to do and what there is to do also and mr Matty plays had said this i guess i don't feel as bad because i was going to say uh you know when i was playing it i don't like how it feels like actually moving or like uh i guess aiming right moving from left to right up and down aiming your gun i did not like it um it fe i felt now of course there's like sensitivity things of course you could adjust but it felt like too heavy for me it just didn't feel good um I, when vampires kind of like corner you unless you can get them in like a hallway their movements I, I was using like an assault rifle it's not the greatest because like the aiming is in the great or at least i'm not the greatest at doing it it's uh it's, it's just not there this this game again as i said from uh, where they came from from Prey and Dishonored and, and even Deathloop. Deathloop, I thought, was a good game, okay? I didn't think it was the masterpiece other people said. But I didn't think it was a good game. This is, it's not. This game is not a good game. Um, and the thing is, this game comes out in an unfortunate, like, is ultimately there's this last thing you can, you can lay your hat on or rest your hat on, okay? It's on Game Pass. And a thing that I was saying, you know, leading up to this game is, well, and I, I mean, go back. There's literally evidence for this. If this game lasts me a few nights or, or a week or two, that's okay. You know, Zelda's next Friday. So, like, I think a lot of us are going to give our lives and our souls to Zelda in a week and a half. So, ultimately, Redfall doesn't have to last too long. It's also not live service. You may even beat it in the next couple of days if you just kind of, you know, uh, race your way through it. So, really, what does it have to do? Well, it has to be just enjoyable enough to play through it a couple days. And because it's on Game Pass, you don't spend any money. But here's also the issue. This game, you can buy it, and it's $70. So, firstly, don't buy this. <laughs> do not buy this game for $70. You could put that money towards anything. Also, it... You know, while I say all these Game Pass things, and that was my primary reason for getting it, well, the only thing I'm losing is time. Well, the thing is, you know, I'm in a unique situation with, with uh, having this as my job and playing all these games. If you haven't played Survivor, you haven't finished it, or Dead Island, Dead Island, I think, is a phenomenal... I did a review on it. I think it's a phenomenal game. Next Friday is Zelda. So, like, time is the only thing you're losing here if you're not paying for it, but at the same time... And you could say, well, that's not that big of a deal. Then go play it. Well, I'd actually rather you play... I know Jedi is having the, the PC trouble and also consoles, but I think it'll get better. And I also think, well, on PS5, I think it's better than Redfall. But, you know, it's just better. I think it's a better experience. Dead Island 2, I actually think, runs really well across the board. And I think it's a great game. So, yeah, you're only losing time with Redfall, but you probably could play one of those two games and you'd be, or play uh, Breath of the Wild to get ready for Tears of the Kingdom and you'd be good. You know what I mean? So it's tough. I, I don't know who's going to get this game. I don't know how long this game is going to survive for because uh, it's not that much fun. At its best, it's okay. Everywhere else, it's severely below average. And then next Friday, a giant, a literal, bigger than Hogwarts Legacy, I think. It's gonna, Zelda's gonna sell 20, 30 million units in the first, like, two or three months. Like, I think it's gonna be easy for it. So, like, you have a, a sleeping giant that's about to awaken in one week. Who's gonna play this? So, it sucks because, uh, mainly it sucks because of that history. I cannot believe that Prey... And I believe they made Prey, and then they made this. How did... Th there should be an FBI investigation on how that happened, because that's inexcusable. I don't know who decided to do... And I, I think Mr. Matty Plays maybe made the argument of, 
The thing is, with all of their games, they don't really sell all that well. They're great, but they don't sell. So, like, Dishonored, Prey, and they're more, like, niche, right? They're for, like, a smaller group almost purposely. So, maybe they decided, well, we need to branch out. So, let's make, I mean, vampires. Games about vampires. Like, that's a big market, right? Let's do just a loot, a looter shooter. And then let's just make it about as lazy as we can. And multiplayer, all that stuff, right? So, we'll try to go for a much bigger group than we did when we did. Because Prey, I think Prey did awful in terms of sales, right? In, like, the larger scheme of things. So, may maybe that is it. I mean, I wouldn't doubt that at all. They said, okay, well, we, at some point, we need to make money. At some point, we need to make a game that goes for more people. So, we can't keep making these games. We need to make, you know, a game like this. And, uh, well, this isn't how you do it either. I think you should probably rather go back and, and pray that people are, not that kind of pray, pray, P-R-A-Y, that people will actually get those games. So, let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.